It is great to have you here in the house of the Lord this morning. Uh, you have braved the cold. You are the frozen chosen here today. Um, I am so weak right now because for the past two days straight, I feel like all I've been doing from the morning, I got my coffee and said, I'm going for the day. Uh, I'm shoveling or catching up on shoveling or snow plowing or snow blowing. Um, our, our plow, I, I think our plow dog get, get, did a great job on our parking lot. Phenomenal job. I am so impressed. Uh, they literally have been here for two days straight uh, because when they would plow it, another couple couple inches already landed and so they had to do it multiple times um, they just it just was great a lot of work was put into that and now we're in the deep freeze I thought we were gonna have 30 degrees all winter I guess not uh, we are winter is finally hit here but you know what we're Wisconsin we know how to deal with it we've dealt with it before and thank you for being here this morning we know how to keep safe and keep warm and the Holy Spirit is here uh, to do great and mighty things can I get an amen on that all right, it is great to have you again. I'm Pastor Craig Ellison, the pastor here of Celebration Assembly. Uh, we're going to start out, I, again, I have really felt that there is a turning in ministry of this church and in me personally as the pastor. Um, of course, God is here. We're preaching the gospel. But I truly feel uh, that the atonement is not only here to, to save, but the atonement is also here to heal. And when I mean heal, I mean heal spiritually uh, for salvation, but also physically in our bodies, but also mentally, also in our marriages. God wants to heal in our finances. God is in the healing business. Can I get an amen? And I know you and I, I have truly felt, again, uh, just a turning in that area that God is in the healing business and he is ready to do incredible signs and wonders. And he wants to work through that to see people saved. Can I get an amen? So I'm excited about what God wants to do. And um, one of the newer things that we're going to do here is that God is, is God touching people's lives right here at church. I want you to hear about it. I want you to hear testimonies. I want testimonies for you to increase your faith that if God can heal so-and-so, if God can save so-and-so, he can save me and he can touch me. And so right now, I want to have a, we have a healing testimony for, from Jerry Stevens. Come on up, Jerry. God is doing, God has done something incredible in his life, and um, I want him to talk about it. So you're going to talk here, but I also want the camera to catch you, so I might do this too. Good morning, everybody. How's morning. everybody doing? Awesome. All right. I brought my notes with me here. So, That's great. So back in 2018, I had foot surgery, and it didn't go well. I actually... My big toe didn't heal properly and it became infected. So then I had another surgery the next year. And I know you guys all prayed for me. So uh, I know I was out, man, it was three months every year. Uh, so I was out six months out of two years. Um, that was a while. Yeah. Yep, rela yep, on the couch, right? So after two surgeries, I still had a lot of discomfort, a lot of aches, throbbings throughout the day. Especially in the evening when I went to relax my foot felt like it was just going to fall off. It was really, t it was really tough. Um, I realized the pain was something that I might have to live with. I didn't want another surgery. I just, I, f I felt that uh, I was just going to live with it the rest of my life. Um, and, and plus, that would also complicate things in my foot too as well. So uh, during the altar call, this was back, man, this was, I think, Breck knows. It was like four months ago, four and a half months ago. Yeah, I think it was September. September. Yeah. Yep. During the altar call, um, we, there was an evangelist here, and uh, we, we, we prayed. I think this was the church service that lasted like until 5 p.m., 2 o'clock. Yeah, it was. 2 it or was 3 for us. Five Maybe for, it was 5. No, 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 yeah. you're right, because then I, I went right from there into whatever we did that night. That's right. Yep. So I remember, uh, boy, I mean, it was, it, it was amazing. I mean, I remember, I think it was Joan. She was sitting there, and, and, and he said something about a foot, and then I saw the foot grow, you know, from the leg to the, it was just amazing, right? So my, uh, boy, I tell you, my, my faith at that time was really super strong. So at that point in time, I prayed for my foot. The, the, uh, the evangelist had Tara put, her, put his hand, put her hand on my foot. We prayed. Um, I went home and I, I felt like, man, I'm, I, you know, come on, God, you got to heal me, right? It, Amen. it didn't work. It didn't. It, it wasn't any better. But 
That week I encountered pain and I kept praying. I got, man, I kept saying, God, right. help me. Take away my pain. We prayed about it. I believe my pain's going to go away. Right? About a week and a half, was, man, it was about nine, ten days later, I was sitting on the couch and I was relaxing and I realized how good my foot felt. L literally, I was sitting there like, this is unbelievable. I felt really good. I felt really healthy. I had no pain whatsoever. Then after that point in time, I still, every day, I, my, I had no pain after that. And it's just amazing. I, to, to this day, I actually don't have any pain in my foot. So, I, I, so it's a, such an awesome testimony. Yes. Yes, I do. I, this is my testimony. I want to give God thanks for Praise God. healing Amen. me. So thank you, Jesus. Amen. Um, the other thing, too, I know when we were in prayer, if you guys aren't going to Monday Night Prayer, you should. Yes. Right? But we, when we were praying, uh, Pastor had mentioned something about uh, in Mark, it's, I think it's Mark 11, at that point in time where Jesus was walking and, and the fruit, the fig tree didn't produce any fruit, and, and Jesus cursed the fig tree. It didn't, if you, guys did, if you guys knew this, it didn't die right away. It took several days. Jesus went and did a lot of different things. Jesus came back and then looked at the tree and it was dead. So he killed it from the, it, from the roots and then from the roots it, it takes a few, it takes time for everything to, to die, right? And I feel that truly happened with my foot is where I, we prayed and we prayed and we prayed and it just wasn't getting any better than it. With time, with faith, uh, God definitely made a healing. So thank you, Jesus. Amen. Can we get amen. an amen? Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Jerry. Thank you so much. Yeah, that story, uh, God is, and this is just the beginning. Um, what we're going to be doing here, because we really believe God is doing a new thing. Remember, I, we, we, matter of fact, we talked about that on Monday uh, in the book of Isaiah, that God, and I even, I felt this was from the Lord, that God said, I'm ready to do a new thing. And I believe this new thing is that uh, I truly believe the prayers that we're praying are going to grow revival. And through that, God is pouring out his spirit uh, through his people for healing. And uh, I feel that there's a new ministry that is, that is really coming into here. We had uh, Sue uh, a couple months ago give her testimony of when she was prayed for right here at the altar. Uh, and then Jerry, um, next week, uh, I'm very excited. You're going to hear another healing testimony uh, from Larry Siseski. He's going to give a healing testimony next week. Uh, not only that, but he's going to also talk to us a little bit about his testimony of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Um, I'm just so excited about that. Last week we prayed uh, over uh, Barb Everlein, uh, over some leg and back problems. And uh, after we prayed, she literally said, wow, I, I feel good. I, I, and so I'm really excited to just kind of follow up uh, with that as well. Um, God, again, is doing some incredible things. I know this is very spontaneous. Can I just share your story, Corey? Uh, thank you, Corey. Just raise a hand here. Corey, uh, I love you, man. You have become, mm, yeah, he's newer in our church. Uh, he is dating Amy, and you really see that relationship strong by Amy not even sitting with him. But um, I'm kidding, she's doing nursery. <laughs> But, um, but anyway, they've been dating for uh, a while now, and uh, God has been doing great things in that, in that relationship. Um, so Corey's new to our church, kind of newer to how we do things here. Um, but he's been here uh, enough to see, wow, okay, pastor says that, you know, in Peter, it says he died for us, not only for our sins, but that we were healed. Not that we will be, no, his death and atonement not only saved us, but it also healed us. Um, and many other areas in the Bible uh, where it says, do not forget, uh, do not forget all my benefits. I've healed every one of your diseases and I've healed all your sins. So God is here to heal you and to save you through the atonement by the blood. Amen. And so anyway, Corey has been here long enough that he's seeing the power of God and he knows that, you know, if God can heal Larry, if God can heal Jerry, if all I need to do is pray by faith and the and the come and the 
and the authority that I have and the spirit that I have, that same spirit that's in me is the same, the same spirit that was in Christ is the same spirit in me. And so I have that authority through Christ uh, to, to heal. And so um, he uh, contacted me a couple weeks ago late at night. He was afraid he was, he was waking me up. I said, I, I don't care about these things at all. But he said, my back has really been killing me. It's really been hurting. And I finally just got to a point that said, God, your blood healed me. And in the name of Jesus, I want to be healed. And he said he prayed that prayer. And is, how's your back even? Is it still good? He said his back got healed by just praying that prayer. And so uh, praise God. Can we give God the glory on that? Until we, sometimes it takes until we get sick and tired of being sick and tired to use that authority in Christ and say, God, my body is yours. Realignment back to you. And so uh, it's just great to hear what God is doing. And again, I hope that builds your faith that if God can do it in them, he can do it in you as well. Matter of fact, Mark 16 says up on the screen, Mark 16 says this, as I kind of put myself back together here again. He says this, and this is true. This isn't make-believe. It's not, I hope it happens, but this is true. And it says this, these signs will. Everyone say will. Doesn't say maybe. Doesn't say if you're a real good person. Doesn't say if you say the rosary four or five times in an hour, Father. No, it says these signs will accompany those who believe. What does that mean? That means not just in the head, but those who have a relationship with God. Those who are having this deep relationship with God. Those who believe in the name of Jesus, they will drive out demons. You know that since you are a follower of Christ, you have the power to demolish the powers of the enemy. Amen? And so what Satan means to crush you, you can tell Satan where to go. Say, tell him where to go because you have that power to drive out demons, demons in, in, in people's lives, demons of fear in your life, demons of, of doubt and anxiety. You know, those are demons. Those are spirits. And God did not give you a spirit of fear. So you command that spirit to leave in the name of Jesus Christ. Also, if you are a believer, you will speak in new tongues. Not maybe, not no. If you are with and you are open, you will speak in new tongues. That means that the baptism of, of the Holy Spirit is for every person here, not just for a few, but for all. And so if you're a follower of Christ, God wants us to speak in tongues. And also this, if you are a follower, you will place your hands not just mine that were anointed in Argentina, but God literally said that you will place your hands on sick people and they will get well. I want to hear testimonies up here, not only of, 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 um, of evangelists praying, not only me praying over you, but I want, I want other ones that, that, I want other testimonies up here that say, oh, when Joe put, Beth put her hands on me and prayed, I got healed. I want you to do the work of what God has called you to do. And so I really encourage you, um, once we really get going on this, uh, tell me of your testimony. Tell me of your testimony uh, because I would love to hear it. And uh, for some of you, I'd love you to share it to the whole church as well. Matter of fact, someone already came to me this morning cry, kind of crying and saying that um, God is ready to heal someone today. Um, we don't know the details of that yet, but uh, an individual came to me and said, um, actually said that I, this is literally what this person said. He came crying and said, God said that I am to lay my hands on someone for them to be healed today. And I don't know who that is, but if that's you today, I would be honored after service uh, to pray uh, over you uh, because this individual feels that you will uh, be healed today. And so we are going to believe that. And so I'm excited about what God is doing. Uh, God is just starting here yet. Um, I believe that through these healings and through our prayers that revival will happen. Can I get an amen? And remember, revival isn't pretty. Revival is messy. Revival will change our clocks. It will change our times. It will change what we normally do here. But you know what? When it's from the Lord, 
uh, we will do what God is wanting us to do. And so we're really praying for exciting things. That is why I also feel right now that um, there is no better time to start our year off by our 21 day praying fasting. If we already thought God is moving now, the Bible says that some things only get answered by what? Prayer and fasting. And so if we already think God is moving now, just wait till while we're praying and fasting. This, I think this month be, might be the biggest time we'll ever see incredible, th that the biggest thing we'll see of God moving in the hearts of people. I think we're going to see salvations happen like never before, and we're going to see healings commonplace while we're praying and fasting. I'm excited about it. I hope you get excited for it too. Um, why don't you, right on your, uh, on your pews, grab the green sheet that I have on there. And let me just, again, uh, let me just tell you a little bit about what the next 21 days will be. I really encourage you, if you've never uh, fasted at all um, during our 21-day fast, I really, really encourage you that this is the year. I really believe if we do this as a church together, um, I don't see why the church isn't lined up on a Sunday morning around the building, people waiting to get in because they hear that the Holy Spirit is here in a thick way to save the lost and to heal the sick. I really believe that this will be a move of God uh, that we've never seen before. Um, it starts tomorrow and goes all the way through Sunday the 4th. It's a 21 day fast. Uh, what is a fast? It enables you to focus and intensify your desire for holiness and to help you hear the voice of God more clearly. Why do we fast? Fasting takes your attention off your everyday earthly needs and helps you focus your attention on the more eternal spiritual needs. It is time to put down your flesh. And so for our fast here at Celebration Assembly, we're really going to be seeking and praying for personal issues, for healings, for salvations, for our family, and growth like never before on Celebration Assembly. We need to be prepared because when God moves, it will attract many people that are hurting. And this is what I, I, this church was never meant to be like a cruise, meaning that it's for the healthy and the wealthy. This is going to be like a battleship where we're going to take care of those that are in pain and hurting. And we are going to fight the good fight. We are in a war against the enemy. And you know what? I feel that through our fasting and praying, we are going to see the hurt and the pain come and they will get delivered. Not only do I want to see salvations and healings, but I feel that the enemy has, has brought many of you down through addictions and through false thinking that needs to be delivered. Some of you need to be de delivered from a generational curse. Some of you need to be delivered of pornography. Some of you have a problem, maybe there's issues of drinking. Maybe you have issues of, of bitterness or anger. Maybe you have a temper issue. Uh, maybe you even lash out on that. Whatever the case may be, God not only wants to save, he wants to also heal, but he also is in the deliverance business, delivering you from the bonds of what the devil has, uh, has put you under. And so we believe in that here and we want to pray for that as well. Um, it is for us to become less and for God to become greater. Uh, there are some examples of people who have fasted in the Bible. Uh, what do we do? Spiritual fasting is almost always partnered with prayer. It must be partnered with prayer. Matter of fact, uh, many or there is a place in the Bible very much so that, that prayers did not get answered. Uh, prayers did not get answered because, no, you can go keep it on that, uh, that fast side there, son. Uh, but but there's a place in the Bible where God literally said, this can be only be answered by prayer and fasting. And so for some of you who maybe have not been getting your prayers answered, maybe it's because God is wanting you, maybe you need to fast about it as well. And so uh, during these times, um, you would normally eat. These are the times where you'll spend extra time beyond your normal devotion. But while you're fasting, you're going to spend extra time fasting and praying for many of those things that are on that list. And then flipping over, uh, there's different type of fast. The most common fast is to stay away from food and drink only water. Um, if you haven't done this before, then maybe during this fast, start out, many of you just fast one meal a day. 
Um, don't fast the meal that you normally wouldn't. If you normally don't have breakfast, don't say I'm gonna fast breakfast. That's not a sacrifice. Um, but maybe fast lunch or fast dinner. And then during that time when you're hungry the most is when you then surrender your heart to God the most during prayer. Um, maybe some of you will do a juice only fast. Um, there's many different ones. Um, other non-food fasts include, and this is the ones that I really am kind of pushing for because I think it's the ones that, that, that hurt us the most um, or pressure us the most. Not only will I probably do a food one, but I'm going to couple it with, um, you know, some of you need to abstain from watching television. Um, some of you need to stay away from social media. I know some of you have just taken Facebook off completely because you know some of the bad stuff that that's bring. Or maybe gaming systems or streaming networks. Uh, the motive behind such would be to deny yourself the things that get in the way of you spending extra time with God. What does this accomplish? It doesn't change God's heart at all. It's all meant to change you, to change you. Listen to God's voice for direction for your life, for healing in your life, for deliverance in your life. Hear what is on the heart of God. Here's some do's and don'ts. Have a plan today of what you're going to do tomorrow. Some of you maybe already have a plan of what you're going to start tomorrow. Don't, don't, come, don't wake up tomorrow morning and say, hmm, I wonder what I want to do. I would already get into it already tonight so you're ready for tomorrow. Don't think of fasting as a way to get extra points of God. You will not get any extra points. It is all there just to love God and for him to love you. You don't have to earn his love. You've already got it. Don't make it a big deal either to your friends. The Bible makes it very clear that we don't go out and say, hey, I'm fasting. I'm fasting. Do I look pretty good? No, the Bible makes it clear to make sure you take a shower, wash your face, become presentable, that no one outside really knows that you're fasting at all, um, except for probably us in here. But please don't make it a big deal to those you, you work with. And then also for you to help you doing your fast, we have some additional things down here for you. Um, Ingrid, thank you so much again. Ingrid has put together, uh, um, and again, she takes months to prepare, uh, months of praying, months of fasting to prepare. Uh, she does a, a, a devotional just for us during our fast. And so again, uh, Ingrid has heard from the for, heard from the from the from the Lord and uh, and an incredible another incredible 21 day devotional. So get your morning started. Grab one of these devotionals. Let it motivate you. Let it keep you going throughout the the 21 days. Make sure you grab a devotional here. Um, another important thing about uh, uh, fasting is journaling. Journaling uh, every day, kind of just letting God. Uh, just letting God know what are the things that are struggling. What are you struggling with? How is today going? Is it easy? Is it hard? What are you hearing from the Lord? All those things. Grab a journal. Grab a, a fasting journal and write in it for the next 21 days your thoughts, what is going on during it, and what God is doing in your life. And this is a personal. This is personal between you and the you and the Lord. I've been fat. I've been journaling. I don't know how I've been journaling ever since I really got to know the Lord at age 13. And so I have volumes and volumes of this and I love it. I love it. It, it has really increased my prayer life for the Lord. We have a victory box here and this victory box here says, take a piece of blue cardstock and write down the great things or testimonies that God is doing through you through the fast. So make sure you grab one of these, write what God is doing. Uh, if you could put your name on it, that'd be awesome. And put it in the victory box. That'd be great. Now, the next one is the believe box. And we would like everyone to do this too uh, very shortly. Grab a piece of paper. And we have some envelopes here. And on the envelopes, you're going to put your name on the outside and put the year. So 2024, 20, I was going to say 2013, 20, 2024, uh, uh, Pastor Craig Ellison. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take that piece and write down the things that you are believing God for, for this year. Put this paper in the envelope and write your name on it. Um, I, this is, a, now the victory box, yes, we are going to look at those and give victory together. 
Um, we're going to have more testimonies of what God is doing through those. These are between you and God. So what you're going to do is you're going to write your name. You're going you're to put the things that you're believing God for, for for this year. Like during the fast and, and during this year, I am praying for this. I'm praying for that. I'm praying for the prodigal. I am praying for healing and all this. Put it in the envelope. Seal the envelope. Put your name and the year on it. Put it in this box. And then next January, I will give that back to you. And I want you to look at it. And you're going to be amazed of how many things throughout the year God has answered uh, for you through that. And I've already handed back some envelopes of, your, of those who did it last year. So open it up and say, wow, through the fasting and prayer, God has been answering some incredible things in my life. And let it give you that, that joy to keep doing it and keep doing it and let it build your faith. And so let's start tomorrow. And I believe God is going to be doing some great and mighty things through that. And then also, too, as you can see on the screen, we are going to continue our hour of power prayer services. Again, we, it is, like Jerry said, if you have not been going to them, words of knowledge, words of wisdom, people are getting healed. Things are going on in the heavenlies. There's powerful prayer time that's happening. Uh, it, it's growing every single week. We believe that the prayers that are prayed on Mondays are the seeds that will grow into revival tomorrow. And so we're really excited about that. But for the next three hour of power prayer meetings during the fast, we're going to pray like usual, but we're also going to just stay focused on our fasting as well and praying for what God is doing during the fast. So please join us specifically for the next three weeks at least, and let's see what God does as we fast together and pray together for that. Can I get an amen? Amen. God is here, and I cannot wait to see what God's going to do. All right. Woo! Ah, man, there's a lot of good stuff God is doing. God is good. And all the time. Amen, amen, amen. I love testimonies, and I love what God's going to do here for the next month. Let's get excited, let's expect, and let's see what God's going to do. All right, I'm just going to, I'm just going to finish what we started last week. Uh, this is going to be part two. Uh, I had one more point I wanted to share with you from last week. So this is point two of week four. If you look at your blue sheets, uh, it has all the, all the announcements my wife just read, but on the other, you'll see I even filled in the blanks for most of it for you from what we did last week. And then just a little bit at the bottom we're going to go through today. Let me read the scripture that this is based on. Acts 2, 42 and 47 say, They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship and to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone... Everyone that was there was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. What the apostles were doing is that while they were praying for people, many wonders and signs were being performed. And because of those signs and wonders that the Lord was doing, many people were giving their faith to the Lord. And we believe here, too, that signs and wonders will happen that will bring your loved ones to the Lord. Believe it. Expect it. Bring them here to church. Number 44. All the believers were together and they had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day, they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They came to church. And then they broke bread in their homes like we do in our C groups and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. They praised God and enjoyed the favor of all the people. And the Lord added, and that's what I love, when we do things God's way, when we go to church, when we go and do and be what God has wanted us to do, what does the Lord do? The Lord added to their church or to their numbers daily those who were getting saved. And if God can do it then, God can do it now. Amen? Believe it. There are many people in this community that need Jesus, and we are the hands and feet to do that. Matter of fact, again, when you see someone hurting at work, at the grocery store, you know what, if you see someone in pain, go over to them and just easy. That is an easy way to start the gospel, is to say, I see you're in pain. I see you're distraught. 
can I pray over you? What can I pray for you about? And you can place hands on them and pray over them and expect healings to happen. And through that, share the gospel and let us add the numbers daily to what Christ wants to be saved. Amen? I'm excited about what God's going to do. The Spirit works through the body of Christ. The Holy Spirit works through you. The Holy Spirit works through you. This passage we just read tells of a very joyful picture. God was with them and, he, and working through them. It is clear that the success was not the result of some skills or a program that people that people that brought people to Jesus. It was preaching the power of the gospel. The growth came because the Holy Spirit was prevalent and he was working through the disciples and the believers. He works through the local church. I wonder what does God want us to do here at Celebration Assembly in Fond du Lac? Honestly, nothing can stop God. But the big question is, can you trust him? There were some things that these apostles were devoted to. If we want our lives to be filled with gladness and joy, always praising God like these people, then we need to be devoted to these things. And like last week, we to experience the Holy Spirit-filled life in your life, you need to stand on the three-legged stool. What is the three-legged stool? The first one that we dealt with last week is it needs to be built on, your life needs to be built on God's word. If your life is not built on these three legs, it will fall. Your, your walk with the Lord will fall. So these three things need to be strong. First, you need to be in the word. Change takes place by the study of the word. We build our lives on the foundation of God's word. Many are not strong today because they do not feed enough on the word of God. It must be daily. It must be at least daily. We need to take in God's word consistently, daily, multiple days even, as much as you're able. God's word is competing today with all the voices that come to us from all angles, every day, all day, relentlessly. That is why if you don't get, that is why we need a quiet place to be with God. We need that diet of the word to, to, to repel all, the, all the, the word from the world. To spend real time with the creator of the universe. Where we can get away from all the noise and to just hear him. That is what I want you to do during the fast. Stop a lot of talking and just hear from God. To stay healthy and strong, you need to quench the thirst of your spiritual life with the word of God regularly and consistently. There is no shortcut to a healthy, vibrant life in Christ. You must work at it. Number two, you must build strong relationships. So to be a strong Christian, you need the word, you also need strong relationships. And really that comes into play by becoming part uh, and active in your local church. These days we can, we can close our doors and step into our house without even meeting or greeting our neighbors. Yeah, we were created for connection. Our souls yearn for connections. Actually, the first thing God says is that it's not good for man to be alone. God said humans were not to be in isolation. We were made for relationships. And the Holy Spirit works through lives to touch lives. And only when we come together can this happen. Coming together enables us to hear from one another what God is saying and doing. The devil seeks to separate us, to separate us as a church and keep us separated. We need to stay in the family. It's the only safe place for us to be. And the last point that I have is that you need to make prayer a priority, period. Everyone say period. In order to live the Christian life, you need to be in the word constantly. You need to be in the word daily. You need to be part of a church and grow in a church and be connected to a church. But prayer is vital in your relationship with God. Prayer is the conversation that turns our salvation into a close relationship. The book of Acts did not tell us how much the apostles evangelized, what they did, or how they did it. 
But what was mentioned in the Bible is how they prayed. They were praying as a group before Pentecost. Now in Acts 2, with more than 3,000 new converts, they were devoted to prayer. In Acts 4, they prayed. And when they, were, when they were electing deacons, they prayed. When they were together, they prayed. The Holy Spirit came down when they prayed. Everything big that God did happened when, they, when God's people were together and prayed. Acts 6, 3 says, Brothers and sisters, choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the Spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them and we'll give them our attention to prayer, to prayer, to prayer, and the ministry of the word. Acts 10, both Cornelius and Peter were praying. Cornelius in Caesarea and Peter at Joppa. And the Spirit spoke to both of them, eventually leading Peter to Cornelius' house where he preached the gospel. Acts 12, when Peter was in prison, the church prayed. Acts 13, they prayed to send Peter and Barnabas out to their missionary journey. Acts 16, Paul and Silas were praying, were praying and singing in prison. It was, it was something they did all the time. It was something that Jesus did all the time. He prayed to his father. And again, that is why it is so vital for us as a church to be together in prayer. Yes, you can pray individually, but there's so much power when you come to pray. And our church has many times where you can do that. Number one, we pray yearly. That's your next, uh, the next slide there, son. We pray yearly at our 21 days of fasting and praying. We're going to start tomorrow where we put our fleshly desires down to pursue the will of God. We will literally tithe of our time the first of the year. Then three times a year, we have a solemn assembly, just like last week. A time that we set aside three times a year to pray and to focus on key things God is doing. So we look at the year we look almost at the quarter, and then weekly, we have our Hour of Power prayer gathering. Every Monday at 6.30, where we have powerful times where the Lord, seeking God, where we can use our spiritual gifts, planting seeds that will grow into salvations, healings, and revival tomorrow. Amen? Here are the characteristics of those who pray. They are, first of all, and that's the next slide there, they are regular at their prayers. They understand that prayer is the most powerful use of their time. And also, prayer has become the first position of their heart, not the last. Without prayer, you are without power, period. You, have, you may have a well-designed engine, but you are without fuel. The Holy Spirit works in response to prayer. I even say it this way. The Holy Spirit will only work at the speed of your prayers. You have low prayers, low answers. You have high prayers, God is there. He works at your response. Prayer is God's designed way of releasing his will. And that's your space. Prayer is designed to release God's will in people's lives. Look at Jeremiah. Jeremiah 33, 1 says this. While Jeremiah was still confined to the courtyard of the, co of the guard, the word of the Lord came to him a second time. This is what the Lord says. Who had made the earth, the Lord who framed it and established it. The Lord is his name. Call to me, pray to me, and I will answer you. And I will tell you of great and unsearchable things that you do not even know of. At this point, Jeremiah was still confined to the court of the, of the guard. He was imprisoned. The nation had been conquered, and now it was under the rule of the Babylonians, the bad, the bad people, the enemy. The people had been taken captive with a small group, a remnant that was left in Jerusalem. Everything was bleak and hopeless, but God called Jeremiah to pray. Verse 3 is a command. God said, call to me or pray to me, and I will, I will answer. You call, and I will promise you, says the Lord, that I will answer and surprise you with great and unsearchable things that you don't even know of. 
I can do wonders, but you can call on me, says the Lord. We saw in the gospel that those who came to Jesus were healed and they were helped when they were praying to God. But not everyone. There were many who were not healed. Because why? Because they did not ask. They were near Jesus, but they have chosen only to stand and watch. They were skeptical. Only those who care to ask and ask by faith were healed and blessed. Matter of fact, James 4, 2b says it very well. It says, you do not have. Your answers aren't coming because you do not even ask God. Ask God today. It is not that God did not promise, but it's that his people did not ask. And I want to close with an illustration here before we go to prayer. One day, George Mueller, who was a great evangelist in England in the 1800s, great man, George Mueller, he looked down the street of Bristol, England, and he saw many homeless children. He was so moved with concern and decided to do something. He started an orphanage, and he had only two pence in his pocket. In 60 years, George Mueller, listen to this, in 60 years, George Mueller took care of 10,000 orphans. He could, have said, he could have said, I don't have the money. There's no way to care for them. Their needs are too great. I don't even have enough money to buy the food. But instead, he trusted God, he prayed to God, and God blessed him because of his mighty, mighty way of praying. During his 60 years of ministry, George Mueller never solicited funds from anyone. He never asked for funds. Instead, he committed himself to pray and to ask God for what was needed to keep the orphanage running. He was, he was willing to pray the impossible prayers. He kept a record of his prayers. And his prayers, listen to this, his prayers recorded filled more than 3,000 pages. But listen to this. His journal also noted that out of his 3,000 pages, more than 30,000 prayers were answered. On one occasion, let me tell you about the work of God through your prayer and fasting. On one occasion, a milk truck just happened to break down in front of the orphanage on a day where there was not supposed to be no milk. The truck driver came in and he said, excuse me, sir, all this milk is going to expire. Would you have some use for it? And every need of that orphanage was always met because of George Mueller's prayers. The secret church to answered prayer is prayer. Being led by the Holy Spirit of God. If we do not have what he wants us to have it, it's only because we have not asked. If we could all stand with our heads down and eyes closed. If I have any elders that could come forward for prayer. My question to you as we close today, and the Spirit is in this room, is what is the Holy Spirit speaking to you about? Where do you need his healing today? James 5 says, if any one of you is sick, let them call on the elders of the church that are here and pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer that's offered in faith will make that sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. And if they have sinned, they also will be forgiven. You see here in the same verse, God makes it clear again that God died for your healing, but he also, he also died for your sins to be forgiven. Many times those two come together. And 1 John 5 says, this is the confidence that we have in approaching God. That if we ask anything according to his will, he will hear you. And if you know that he will hear you, whatever you ask, we know that we have what you have asked. What are you asking for the Lord today? It will be answered today. And so right now we're going to close. I'm going to pray. 
And as soon as we're done praying, we're going to go into one last worship song. And during that song, I want you to worship the Lord. And after that song is done, if you need to go, please do so quietly and have your talk into the foyer. But this room will be a place where God is molding lives, changing lives, saving lives, and healing lives. And we encourage you to come to the altar where we believe the altar is on fire of the Holy Spirit to burn away all the things that need to be burned away out of our life, but also for the fire of the Holy Spirit to fall on you. And I will also be here to pray for those who need, maybe they want to be baptized in the Spirit today with speaking in tongues, or maybe you're the one, you're the one that God wants to heal today. I would be honored to pray over you today. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, I thank you for this church. I thank you, Lord, for the testimony of Jerry and Sue and next week, Larry and, the, and, and Corey and the many others that are getting touched and healed by the word of God, by the laying of hands. Because when the Holy Spirit works, things change, lives change, and God moves. Lord, I want this church to be one full of salvations and full of healings, Lord God, that, Lord, you're moving, and we give you the glory and the honor in your holy name. We all say amen. Amen. Let's worship, and let's spend time in prayer. Amen. Amen. Amen.